Hi Lakeview, welcome to our weekly formation moment. A couple of weeks ago, when we were about two weeks into self-isolation, I had a really bad day. And it must have been radiating off of me because my daughter spent a couple of hours tiptoeing around me before she finally said, Mom, are you okay? Finally, I just said to her, I'm going nuts, so I have to go out. A friend of mine described these feelings as shack wacky the other day. And even though it was that Sunday when we had the snowstorm, I went out. And it was absolutely the worst day all year that I have gone to take the dog for a walk. Even Wally looked up at me every once in a while as if to say, really, today? Inside, I felt a little bit like that picture of the scream. You know that one? We've all had those days, haven't we? When it feels like there isn't enough space to take a deep breath. When we feel hemmed in and things feel claustrophobic. Spring is in the air, so things don't feel quite as claustrophobic right now, but there's still the reality that as we give other people space, there is way less space in our homes and in our close relationships. What a weird tension of too much space and too little. And as I've been thinking about this, I've been thinking about the closeness we're experiencing with our families or our roommates right now. And that this might be an invitation to make more space relationally in our hearts for those we know best. We cannot open our homes to those outside of our homes and show hospitality to others but maybe we could show hospitality to our own families in a new way. What would it mean to practice hospitality with our families? What would it mean to welcome the people that we think we know inside and out, who we think we have nailed down, who we believe we know so well that we know exactly what they're doing and thinking? What would it mean to welcome them as they are and not as we already perceive them to be. What would it look like to get curious about our families? What would it look like to make more space for one another? I think it would look a lot like listening. So I'm a good listener. I listen for my job. And I think listening is one of the greatest gifts that we give to one another. I find other people really interesting but I am not always a good listener when it comes to my family. I tend to put the people I love into boxes and then just interpret what they say through the ideas I already have of them. That kid's the arguer. That kid can't share his feelings. That one will talk all day if I let them. And so before they've even finished saying what they're saying, I've already made a judgment about them or interpreted what they've said through my own ideas. I'm not receiving them as they are. I am receiving them as I think they are. Good listening is hearing what someone is actually saying, not what we think they're saying or what they said yesterday or last year. Good listening is not just waiting patiently for our turn to say something. Good listening is also not trying to fix a situation. And as parents, it's really easy to turn a conversation into a lesson. There is no better way to shut down a conversation with someone than to tell them how to fix whatever it is they're talking about. Because giving advice is often just a way of managing a relationship instead of a way of entering into it. Making space for someone is way more demanding than giving advice. Listening is sacred work. It is the art of taking someone seriously, of paying attention to someone other than yourself. It is, in the words of Paul in Romans, a way of being devoted to one another in love, of rejoicing and mourning with one another, and of learning humility. 
Now, I understand that a lot of you are with little people talking to you all day long. You can't always be listening deeply to everything they say. So grace is the word of the day. But you could intentionally listen to them when you can. Because if they're going to talk anyway, why don't we just listen? Or we could take time in our day to sit down and give the whole of our attention to one person. To pause and open ourselves up to them and to be the space, the receptacle for their story. Or maybe like me, you have family members that don't talk. Maybe opening up space for them is just letting them be quiet in your presence without the expectation to talk. Not requiring them to give an update or tell you what's going on. I personally love being with the people I love without talking. I spent one whole day with my daughter-in-law on the couch, her on one end, me on the other, and we hardly said a word to one another. We just did our own thing together and we loved it. So this is your practice for this week. Notice the ways you are making space for your own family. Find ways you can practice hospitality with the people you know better than anyone. The point is to see the person standing right in front of me who has no substitute, who can never be replaced, whose heart holds things for which there is no language, whose life is an unsolved mystery. The moment I turn that person into a character in my own story, the encounter is over. COVID is a unique invitation to encounter the people we are closest to. So open up. And here's a little hint to help you notice how and if you're listening. When a loved one voices fear, frustration, disappointment, or pain, notice your own reaction or response. Are you problem solving or accepting what they are saying? Are you trying to cheer them up or are you a witness to their experience? Are you left avoiding their pain or are you being deepened by what is shared? My hope is that we, as we experience this gathering of what is so often scattered, our families, that there is also the chance for the deep integration of our individual stories, our hearts, and our lives. Let's make space for one another to do that.